Welcome to the Fayette County Public Library Storytime. My name is Miss Melissa and this is Miss Kim. Hello. And today our first story is going to be one of my favorites, Stone Soup. My favorite too. Stone Soup by Ann McGovern. A young man was walking. He walked and walked. He walked all night and he walked all day. He was tired and he was hungry. At last he came to a big house. What a fine house, he said. There will be plenty of food for me here. He knocked on the door. A little old lady opened it. Good lady, said the young man. I am very hungry. Can you give me something to eat? I have nothing to give you, said the little old lady. I have nothing in the house. I have nothing in the garden. And she began to close the door. Stop, said the young man. If you will not give me something to eat, will you give me a stone? A stone, said the little old lady. What will you do with a stone? I cannot eat a stone. Ah, said the young man. I can make soup from a stone. Now the little old lady had never heard of that. Make soup from a stone? Fancy that. There are stones in the road, said the little old lady. The young man picked up a round gray stone. This stone will make wonderful soup, he said. Now get me a pot. The little old lady got a pot. Fill the pot with water and put it on the fire, the young man said. The little old lady did as she was told. And soon the water was bubbling in the pot. The young man put the round gray stone into the pot. Now we will wait for the stone to cook into soup, he said. The pot bubbled and bubbled. After a while, the little old lady said, this soup is cooking fast. It is cooking fast now, said the hungry young man, but it would cook faster with some onions. So the little old lady went to the garden to get some yellow onions. Into the pot went the yellow onions with the round gray stone. Soup from a stone, said the little old lady. Fancy that. The pot bubbled and bubbled. And after a while, the little old lady said, this soup smells good. It smells good now, said the hungry young man but it would smell better with some carrots. So the little old lady went out to the garden and pulled up all the carrots she could carry. Into the pot went the long thin carrots with the yellow onions and the round gray stone. Soup from a stone, said the little old lady. Fancy that. The pot bubbled and bubbled. After a while, the little old lady said, this soup tastes good. It tastes good now, said the hungry young man, but it would taste better with ham bones. So the little old lady went to get some juicy ham bones. Into the pot went the juicy ham bones and the long thin carrots and the yellow onions and the round gray stone. Soup from a stone, said the little old lady. Fancy that. And the pot bubbled and bubbled. After a while, the little old lady said, this soup is fit for a prince. It is fit for a prince now, said the hungry young man, but it would be fit for a king with a bit of pepper and a handful of salt. So the little old lady got the pepper and salt. Into the pot went the bit of pepper and the handful of salt with the juicy ham bones and the long thin carrots and the yellow onions and the round gray stone. Soup from a stone, said the little old lady. Fancy that. The pot bubbled and bubbled. After a while, the little old lady said, this soup is too thin. It is too thin now, said the hungry young man, but it would be nice and thick with some butter and barley. So the little old lady went to get butter and barley. Into the pot went the butter and barley 
with the bit of pepper and the handful of salt and the juicy ham bones and the long thin carrots and the yellow onions and the round gray stone. Soup from a stone, said the little old lady. Fancy that. The pot bubbled and bubbled. After a while, the little old lady tasted the soup again. That is good soup, she said. Yes, said the hungry young man. This soup is fit for a king. Now we will eat it. Stop, said the little old lady. This soup indeed is fit for a king. Now I will set a table fit for a king. So she took out her best tablecloth and her best dishes. Then the little old lady and the hungry young man ate all the soup. The soup that was made with the butter and the barley and the bit of pepper and the handful of salt and the juicy ham bones and the long thin carrots and the yellow onions and the round gray stone. Soup from a stone, said the little old lady. Fancy that. Now I must be on my way, said the young man. He took the stone out of the pot and put it into his pocket. Why are you taking the stone, said the little old lady. Well, said the young man, the stone is not cooked enough. I will have to cook it some more tomorrow. And the young man said goodbye. He walked on down the road. He walked and he walked. What a fine supper I will have tomorrow, he said to himself. Soup from a stone. Fancy that. She lied, didn't she? She had all that food there all the time. I saw the look of surprise on your face. <laughs> okay, so. So, do you guys, we went through the story. Would you like to retell it with us by using the flannel board? Okay. Let me empty out my pot. And we'll hand you two. Okay. We could just close our eyes and then we can guess what it is. You want to close your eyes and guess what it is? Well, I think it'd be fun to come up here. I'm not looking at it. Zay. You dropped one there. Do you see the front of it? Do you see the front of it? Okay. So I'm putting the pot up. What came first in the story? Who has the first item that was in the story? You want to put it in there? So first came the water. Then came the, you remember what second? The stone came second. <laughs> <laughs> I think I gave you all first three. <laughs> and then came the yummy <laughs> onion. <laughs> Do you like onions, Lynx? Yeah. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> So after the onion, what came next? Do we remember? Do you remember? Was it the ham bone? All right. All right. What came after that nice, juicy ham bone? Carrots. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and you cut it. Mmm. What came next? Was it the salt and pepper? I'm trying to remember too. We'll make our own stone soup yes. if we get out of order. That is correct. Yes. Go ahead. Yay. And then we had to thicken it up with. Butter and barley. Butter and barley. You have the barley, same? We're all done. Would you try to oh try my. that kind of soup? Oh, I would. I that think sounds it sounded yummy. delicious. I don't think we're 
Oh, wow. Well, well, we could take the rock out. Yeah. It'll have to be for tomorrow's stew. <laughs> I would not want the pepper. I would just want salt. <laughs> I would take the, 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 the pepper out because it, it goes, ah. Oh, I have ten little fingers. They all belong to me. I can make them do things. Would you like to see? I can make them jump high. I can make them go low. I can fold them up quietly and hold them just so. How about another story? This is the story of Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin. Once upon a time, there was a poor miller who had a beautiful daughter. Her eyes were the color of cornflowers, and she had rosy pink cheeks. She was so lovely and clever that the miller couldn't resist telling everyone about her. One day, the king rode through the village. The miller desperately wanted to impress the king. Your Highness, my daughter is pretty and smart, he boasted. But the king took no notice. She can also spin straw into gold, the miller added, sure that this would get the king's attention. Whoa! The king stopped his horse and demanded to meet the miller's daughter. It took her back, he took her back to his castle and led her up a winding staircase to a room in the tur turret. There she found a spinning wheel and a towering pile of straw. Spin this straw into gold by morning, said the king, or you'll be thrown in the dungeon. As soon as the king left, the miller's daughter began to cry. Even if she had a year to spin the straw into gold, she couldn't for she didn't know how. Thinking about the dark, dingy dungeon, she sobbed even louder. Just then a funny little man danced into the room, clicking his heels and tapping his toes. Spinning straw into goat as easy as can be. But if I do that for you, what will you give me? The miller's daughter offered the little man her necklace, and quick as a flash, he spun the straw into gold thread. The next morning, the king was so pleased that he brought the girl an even bigger pile of straw. Again, he ordered her to spin it into gold by dawn. Well, she still didn't know how to do it. Sure that she would be dragged to the dungeon, the miller's daughter wept. And just as before, the funny little man jigged into the room. Spinning straw into gold is easy as can be. But if I do that for you, what will you give me? This time, the miller's daughter gave the little man her ring. Quick as a flash, he spun the straw into gold thread that gleamed in the morning light. The king was delighted and wanted more. He brought the girl a pile of straw so tall it reached the ceiling. She was told to spin it into gold by sunrise. Once more, the girl cried and the funny little man hopped and skipped into the room. Spinning straw into goat as easy as can be. But if I do that for you, what will you give me? This time, the miller's daughter had nothing left to offer him. He made her promise to give him her firstborn child. Then, fingers flying and toes tapping, he spun the straw into gold. The king was so overjoyed with the golden thread that he asked the miller's daughter to marry him. They held the wedding the very next day, and the miller almost burst into pride when his daughter became queen. The king and queen were very happy, and the miller was poor no more. A year after the wedding, the queen had a bonny baby boy. She had forgotten all about the funny little man and the promise she had made. One day, while the queen hummed to a lullaby, the funny little man danced into the nursery and demanded the baby prince. Oh, please don't take my son, the queen begged. The little man thought for a moment. Then he clapped his hands and sang, 
You can keep the prince if you play my game. You've got three days to guess my name. The queen lay awake all night making a list of all the names she could think of. That evening, the little man twirled into the nursery again. Is your name Harry or Larry or Barry? asked the queen. But all of her guesses were wrong. The little man cackled with glee and sang, You can keep the prince if you play my game. You've got two more days to guess my name. The next day, the queen sent messengers all over the land to find more names. Then that evening, the little man appeared again. Are you named Tim or Jim or Kim? Asked the queen. Once again, all of her guesses were wrong. The little man hooted with delight and sang, You can keep the prince if you play my game. You've got one more day to guess my name. Have you heard this story before? What do you think is going to happen? She'll, she'll probably guess. You think she'll guess? Yeah. The next day, the queen's servant was chopping logs in the woods when he heard a strange sound. He ducked behind a pine tree and watched a funny little man leaping around a fire singing, The queen will never win this game for Rumpelstiltskin is my name. The servant hurried home to tell the queen what he had seen. That evening when the little man danced into the nursery, the queen pretended to think. Hmm, she said, is your name Doodlebug or Tiddlywinks or Flibbledejigabit? The little man shrieked with laughter and shook his head. Do you give up? he asked. I know. It's Rumpelstiltskin, said the queen. The little man's face turned as red as a beet and he howled. Oh, what a shame, what a terrible shame. The queen knows Rumpelstiltskin's my name. Throwing himself to the floor, he kicked his feet and pounded his fists so hard that the board splintered and split. Rumpelstiltskin tumbled through the floor and was never seen again. The end. So she did guess his name, didn't she? No, she cheated. <laughs> well, he, anyway, it worked. It cheated. She cheated. Do you think that wasn't fair? A little bit? Why do you say just a little bit? The servant tells her mm -hmm. that wasn't kind of fair. The guy should have known that someone was watching him. You think he should have known? Yeah, he, should, he shouldn't have just said it because then one of the servants would him. So he should have just said it in his mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it would have been sad if the queen would have had to give up her bonny baby boy. Mm -hmm. That would have been sad. But she cheated. So the story ends up happy, I think. <laughs> okay, Miss <Ms>. Melissa. <laughs> One of our themes this month was on sharing. And part of our mission at the library is to teach something to go along with our stores. So we thought we would talk about sharing. Do you guys share at home? best way for parents to teach their children to share is just by demonstrating it. Show your kids how to share. Share something with them or another person. Another thing is through board games or craft activities. For instance, one of our favorites is to get a bunch of craft supplies together, put them in a bag, and then everybody share and make something from that bag of craft supplies. Like one way that you could share is like if, if your friend has a bike and you have a bike you like like you like they have a, a bike and you have a toy go-kart like a one that you could ride on and you could share your you could you could mm -hmm. 
share your go-kart so they could ride your go-kart and you could ride their bike. So take turns with your toys, right? Yes. Well, if you like the story time and would like to find more activities that go along with the story time, the library has worksheets down there that you can pick up. So just come down and see us and keep watching and reading to your children.